Well, it's Christmas holidays time now for me. Customers' cameras will just have to wait. Today, I've pulled this out of my uh, spare parts bins. Vetna 1A. Cox, no frame counter. Press the button, no shutter action. As you can see, it's not exactly a thing of beauty. But let's see if we can make a good working camera out of it. It could earn its living again. So I'll start by removing the top, I think. Now the top of the screw here, as you can possibly see, is somewhat ugly. Someone's been scratching at that with a pair of tweezers or something, and that screw is loose. The washer, the star washer was present. Let's lift that advanced lever off. Broken frame counter spring. Well, that's not exactly an earth shattering discovery. Let's look at these pieces. Let's see what I've got here. The washer, that, that, that. These two pieces, of course, I never put through the ultrasonic cleaner. This is a bit bashed in looking, that top. It probably means that the camera's been dropped on its head at some stage. Now, when that happens, it means that the action of the frame counter is unusually stiff. Now, if the action of the frame counter is unusually stiff, the likelihood of the frame counter spring giving up rapidly increased. Now this is interesting. The catch mechanism in here, which would lock that when it got to the end of the film, is missing. So the leatherette patch is missing off the top, but that's not the only thing that's missing there. Let's have a quick look in there and see what else is going on. The catch is possibly gone. Or it's possibly just pushed back out of the way where I can't see it. Somebody may have taken this apart. Not had any idea how to get it all back together. And just left out the difficult bits. Because such things are not unknown. Well there you go. It's got no guts. So the lever's missing. The return spring for the lever is missing. So... Regardless of the fact that the frame counter didn't work, it wouldn't have locked at the end of the film anyway, so there's no great logic there really. If the frame counter didn't work, you wouldn't need to disable the uh, lock mechanism. Let's just undo this. That screw can go in the ultrasonic cleaner. Not that I have a lot of hope that that's going to make it look like a new part. The top cover's got some green staining around there, verdigris. So it means that there's a little bit of corrosion there. Probably stored in damp conditions. I don't know, perhaps at the back of someone's garage or shed. Let's lift the top cover off. Oh yes, that's a bit crusty looking. And you can just barely see through that viewfinder. That's very, very rough looking. Here, Let's lift out the shutter release. Somebody has put the spring and that thing there. Now that was over there, like that. That's entirely wrong. That. 
spacer should have been there and the return spring on the pin. Now that, what had happened there would very likely cause problems with the shutter release. So someone's been in here, didn't know what they were doing and lost stuff. Or put stuff in the wrong place rather. Let's remove that spring. And what have we got here? Oh, let's take the rewind off. That's rusty. That looks quite rusty around there. Well, that's nickel plated of course. And normally that's not going to rust. Oh, that's very stiff. Take that apart. See if I can lift that gear off there. And let's just pull that back so I can get at the three screws that hold this bracket in place. That screw head looks a little bit damaged and it's loose. This one at the front is a shoulder screw and it has this return spring on it which I have to carefully gather up because they're easily lost and would cause grief if they're not present. Okay, so this is a bit gritty. There's a lot of impacted dirt here. I don't know whether there's any damage to the teeth. Usually not with my camera like this. That little latch mechanism can come out and there should be a spring in there and there is we'll have that These can often be a bit stiff. That squared shaft has very thin walls. There's a hole down the middle of it. Is, um, takes away most of the strength so often it's a bit distorted and you may have trouble getting things like this off. Here's our return spring. A little drive dog. This gear. Now the return spring here is displaced, but I don't know whether that happened when I lifted the top off. We'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it was in fine condition before I took it apart. So that spring and that pull rather and that spacer will have out. Three screws hold this top bush for the film advance in position. And these screws are loose as you can see. No effort required to remove those. That was the clutch assembly. Take that apart. And catch that rogue screw. Okay, so the top of the camera is stripped down. At the base of the camera. Now this is a Retina 1A. It's covered in leatherette, not leather. The two A's are always covered in leather. And the leatherette is unusually stiff and papery compared to the leatherettes used on the later cameras, the three C's and the like. It's usually very difficult to get the leatherette off the base of the camera in one piece. I 
these screw heads are a bit damaged. Uh, they're chrome brass, they're comparatively soft, and if you bash the camera down on a hard surface often enough, it just burrs over the tops of those teeth, the screws, so that they do not want to back out. Let's see if we can encourage this up. If the tripod socket is distorted, which is what happens if somebody has a tripod screw that's a bit uh, misshapen, if they just keep screwing it in, it can actually bell mouth out this piece in the centre, which will then lock everything in place, and you can't get this piece off. The screws are certainly backed out, but it's not helping. Of course, you can see I'm sliding my scalpel underneath that. Well, scalpel blades do not make a wonderful lever. Very prone to breaking in half when you do things like that. Let's see if I can get it screwdriver under here I can on one side oh yeah that tripod socket here is certainly damaged It doesn't even sit square on the camera really. It's so this brass piece here is basically just bell mouthed out so it's jamming the cover on. It's riveted over for practical purposes. That ain't coming. I need a better lever. Thin enough to get under the edge. And strong enough. Well, I think I've got two choices here. I can lever that madly and break the screws that hold the tripod socket to the base of the camera, or pull them out of the pull the screws out of the threads. Or I can run a drill bit down through here. We probably need to be about an eight millimeter drill bit, possibly larger than that, to cut the head off this tripod screw here to enable me to get that top off. The tripod screw is going to have to be replaced regardless. That's useless. If it came off without a fight, I could always just clean up around the top edge of it so that this piece would fit. But it doesn't look like it's going to come out without a fight. And there's dirt or rubbish stuck down in between there. I might soak that with a bit of naphtha, see if that helps free this up. Might be a vain hope. Well I removed one of the two screws here. It was broken. When I look at this, the line of those two screws runs in this line. It should run in line with the body. So this whole piece is twisted here. So the tripod socket's probably not twisted, but this cover is. Coming off. 
Oh, that, that's glued on. Okay. So, to deal with the broken screws, somebody glued that on. Here's the remains of the glue. I'll see if this leatherette will peel back after that fight. I've got to get it all the way back to this point to get at the screws that hold the struts in place. Got no idea what that adhesive is, but it's nothing, nothing good. Let's have that tripod socket off. Screws are loose. I might have predicted that. Two screws hold this cover in place. They're brass. Commonly Corroded and it gives you Zeiss bumps under those two, where those two screws are under the leatherette. That screw, oh, that's the one I've just taken out. Okay, have the film advance out. Three screws hold that bush in place. And they were not loose. Hold back the catch for the rewind button and slide that shaft out. Lift out the takeouts, take up spool. The rewind button here, I'm just going to unscrew that. My bench top is becoming covered in grit and sand and other rubbish. There's a sprocket. The return spring and the lever, the lock lever for the re rewind button, have those out. While I'm here, we might as well have the door off the front 
So the little screw here, the hinge pin screw. That screw appears to be completely clogged up with filth. I can get the front off, the door off, with only one screw removed. A little bit of wriggling. So we'll take the screw that I can get off out, open the front halfway, and with a bit of wriggling, I was able to get the bottom screw out of its hole in the bottom, and I'll just lift that door off. Paper wash is a missing top and bottom of the door there. Let's have a look at that screw, the hinge pin screw here. Yeah, the slots either jammed up with rubbish, yeah it is, it's jammed up with rubbish. That's why I couldn't get the screwdriver to engage and see if it'll undo. Yeah, it will. It wasn't unusually tight. It was the head, the head of the screw was just clogged with rubbish. That's the door off. I still need to get my leatherette back further than that to access the screw at this point, but we'll leave that for the moment. I need to remove the lens and shutter assembly. Alright, let's see if I can get that shutter retaining ring loose. Yes, no arguments. I note there's no paper shims on there. That's sometimes the case, not commonly. It may mean that someone has removed the shutter at some stage, damaged or lost paper shims and didn't replace them. Or it might mean that uh, no paper shims were needed because the focus was spot on at that particular point. So this bracket on the front here, that acts as a stop at the infinity position. This is all quite stiff with dried out grease and grit and dust. I'm looking for evidence that these screws have slipped, that the focus scar ring has slipped relative to the outer helical, and I'd be looking for damage where the screw heads had bitten into the outer helical previously, but I'm not seeing any, which is, that's good, that's a good thing. So I'll mark the position. Of that, uh, focus scale ring on the outer helical. Now I noticed there that the inner helical sits up quite proud of the outer helical right around there at the infinity position. And usually it does sit up slightly, that sits up more than I would normally expect. I'm not reading anything into that really at the moment. We'll assume that everything went back where it had came from on a previous occasion. Okay, so that's off. Let's collapse this a bit. 
four black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Six countersunk or flathead screws, nickel plated ones, hold the retaining ring in place. and out a helical come out and I'll turn those round until they are that the front surfaces are level with each other which is about about there I would say a bit more Back of it. Okay, so I've got the front surfaces level. Now I will extend my marks across that from the outer helical to the inner helical. I had two marks at the base, and I had one at the top. Now at the top there, there's somebody else's mark there as well, so that's going to be a bit less clear. So that should be enough. I should be able to work out where that came from from that. Cover those four black screws. This grease is very dried out. It's like a hard wax. Four screws here, the larger countersunk head screws, hold the focus mount to the back of the uh, front standard to cover those screws and I can should be able to lift this out yeah that felt light trap there is seen better days that's in pieces I'll have to peel that off and glue it all back together on the back of that Okay, and the struts are the next thing to come out of the body. Well, to get to the struts, I've got to get this leatherette peeled back further than that. Preferably all the way to the corner, but that might be a bit, bit too much to ask. <laughs> 